Alright, so a quick answer video about the differences in clusters and in this particular answer it's um, swapping the uh, 1990 Dodge Omni cluster into an older model year Omni or Charger or L body of sorts. Um, as I reiterated in the last video, um, this one the speedometer is missing because it's my parts cluster. This gauge cluster was circa 1979 to 1983. And then from 84 to 89, they had this cluster. And then in 1990, they had this cluster. The differences here between these two clusters is this one does not have an oil pressure gauge, and it also has an electronic speedometer instead of a cable-driven speedometer like the two old units. Um, you can swap between the two. Their mounting is all the same as far as where the four screws all go. They're all in the same spot. If there's ever such a minuscule difference, it doesn't matter because you can put them together. Obviously, all three of them have different connectors. Same thing if you're going to swap into a digital dash for any sort of a Chrysler, you're going to have to change the connectors. But usually the wire colors wind up the same. This has the typical round and flat connector, whereas this has two more modern square connectors. Um, just like before, tachometer module, tachometer module. If you ever have a faulty tachometer on a Chrysler, take out the gauge cluster, resolder the terminals on the tachometer module. Chances are it'll fix your problem. This old thing, the tachometer is actually all self-contained, so it doesn't have the repairable module. Um, basically, if you have an older L body, older than 90, that you want to put the 90 cluster in, which agreeably looks a little smoother and kind of a cleaner look in a sense. Um, a lot of the cars already have an electronic speed sensor for like cruise control and whatnot, or it's just there and unused. If not, go to a boneyard, find any Chrysler with the, you know, 2.2 or 2.5 engine that has an electronic speed sensor in it and yank it out. It's very simple. Um, the one I have here for an example is actually a Ford one, but it's very similar. I don't have a Chrysler one on hand. One 10 millimeter bolt, right down at the bottom of the tranny housing. I'll point to it on my charger. And um, take the connector if you can, it makes it easy. Uh, different wire colors than the Ford one, obviously. And right out of the speedometer sensor, there's going to be at least two wires, sometimes three. Um, there should be a black for the ground, and then a white with orange, which is the signal wire. And the white with orange pretty st stays pretty consistent throughout the years. This is the list that I'd originally made for putting a digital cluster into a Dodge ne into a Dodge or Plymouth Neon. Um, the digital cluster was from a 1986 car. The speedometer sensor was white with orange tracer. And in the Neon, it was also white with orange tracer. And if you look, I've got a wiring diagram here for a 1990 Dodge Omni. It says right here, distance sensor, white with orange. And in the other wire, it has black with light blue. We'll check to make sure it's light blue goes all over the place. Yeah, black with light blue, sensor return. Grounding it out should do the work. Otherwise, um, if you don't ground out the black with light blue or if that doesn't work, um, just tie it into another black with light blue that you find in another sensor on the vehicle. Um, old carbureted vehicle. Trying to think of another sensor that would have, well, on the Hall effect, which is the part in the inside the distributor that has three wires and a little round connector that basically takes the place of points in older vehicles, also has the same black with light blue. That's the sensor return wire. You can connect it into that. But grounding it out should work. But other than that, yeah, you pretty much just have to, you know, cut and tap your wires. If you ever pull a cluster out of the yard, make sure you take the connectors with you with as much wire as you can. That way, you know, makes it a lot easier for you on yourself. So yeah, obviously, the cable driven goes here. Because then you can remove the cable from the vehicle completely. As you can see, it has a kind of a more clean and modern look. This has a very 80s look to it. And then this has a much more smooth finish look. Alright, I will go show where the speedometer sensor is on the car. And to save face for editing, I'm just going to go ahead and walk over there myself. With the camera running.
right down here underneath the manifold. This is where the speedometer cable is. Mine does not have a sensor in it. But all you have to do right down at the bottom there is you take the 110 millimeter out, kind of twist it, pop it out. It should come out with the gear with it. And they can pop the new one in. It's actually really easy. And you know, speedometer cables all over the place. I think you can get rid of that completely. That's all there is to it. I hope it answers the question. Any other questions, I'll do my best to answer.